like, wake up! And you guys really are like the hip-hop early morning, late night talk show. Breakfast Club is the most powerful, popular, urban radio show in America. Made it! Live from the black mothership in New York City, it's DJ Envy and Charlemagne the God. It's different, you know what I'm saying? Like, y'all know what y'all talking about. Thank you, y'all. Be blessed, love. I love y'all. Collectively known as Breakfast Club, bitches! I'm always nervous when I do the Breakfast Club because sometimes you say stuff and it's just gonna get you in trouble. Everybody wake up! Good morning, USA! Yo, 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 Charlemagne the God is out today. He is back tomorrow. I think his flight might have just landed on the next hour or so. But Claudia Jordan's our guest host. Good morning, Claudia. What's up, Envy? How you doing? How you feeling? I'm good. I got more than two hours of sleep tonight. I think last night I think I got three and a half. Oh, you went out? Yeah, I did. Where'd you go? I went to dinner. I met some friends. And I got people here. So they all be like trying to like, you know, get me, which I love. I feel really loved when I come out here to New York. So you was out and about. I went to Nobu. And then early I went to an Indian restaurant with a girlfriend of mine that I want to definitely talk about later on. Yeah? Okay. All right. Well, you had a good night. Well, you know, tonight, well, today is my two-year-old's birthday, Pepe, Peyton. Happy birthday. And for all my kids, when it's their birthday... Uh, when they wake up in the morning, there's balloons there for them. Uh, we usually sing stupid songs. Uh, we have cupcakes and cakes for them in the morning. So uh, when they go to school, they're excited. They feel good. So that's what I did last night. I got the room ready for little Pepe. She turns two today. But then on my way to work, I caught a flat tire. I heard. I caught a flat tire. Then I had to say, now, uh, if you're listening, no matter where you are in New York right now, it's like 30 degrees. It's cold outside. It's like, I was Probably less than that. Probably 25 degrees. Um, so I had to figure out, am I going to change this flat mm-hmm. or I'm just going to drive home on this rim mm-hmm. and just figure another way. So I drove home. I was like, I'm not fixing no <laughs> flat, but I did make it in time. I just walked in about two minutes ago. So shout uh, out to everybody out there on the road. Thank you, because I don't know if I was ready for the yo, 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 yo to do it myself. Yo, so. I, call, I called the producer this morning. I said, tell Claudia she got to start the show because oh I got God. a flat. Oh, it's well, not going to okay. happen, but I did make it in time. So, so. you're two-year-old. Yeah, two-year-old. You go all out. Um, The foul thing is no. You don't? No. So... I don't think that's foul. When you have, no, because when you have multiple kids, right, you go all out for the first couple of kids, right? The first kid, you definitely go all out. You have these huge parties, and it's not even, even even for the kid. Like, the kid never remembers. It's mm-hmm. just for you, and you do all types of things, and you buy all types of things for the kid. And then when the last kid comes, you'd be like, ah, nah, you good. You're going to so get this Carvel cake and relax. You treat the last kid like leftovers? Afterthought, mm-hmm. kind of? Mm-hmm. Not really tripping anymore? Nah, you just be smarter with, with, with what you spend on the kids, because you realize that... It never nothing matters. You don't think the uh, younger kid feels that, and the other kid, the older kid's son, say back when I was five. Nah, because they ain't, they ain't gonna remember it anyway. As long as you love the kids, they're not gonna remember. Like none of my kids ever said, "Dad, when I was one years old, why we had the best." But they don't remember that. So you spend mad money, and the kids don't even remember. Don't even remember. Another reason, ladies and gentlemen, why I have cats and not kids. <laughs> cats and not kids. I would be so mad. No, because when you have the, your first child, you spoil them and, and you give them the world because you're super duper excited. But you know, at number six. You just don't spoil them the same. You still spoil them with love and, 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 and a bunch of other things and, and and for them to see the world. But you just don't spoil them with like, I'm not having super duper big parties and performances like I did with Madison or I did with Logan. Paper is just going to chill. She's just going to thug it out and watch, pay, watch uh, Paw Patrol. So the first kid got ponies and this yes. one gets a Carvel cake. And Paw Patrol. Oh, we still okay. gonna celebrate. We still gonna party, but we're not gonna go over the top. We like you realize it's not worth it. They don't remember it. It's not yeah. like it's something you do, and you can do other things with the money that that makes more sense. I think that makes sense. I never understood why people throw on these big parties. I mean, again, it's for the friends. It's for the it's to stunt. It's Everything's for, for the gram, right? Well, not, well, this is before the gram, but it's for family. It's for friends. You want to enjoy yourself, but they don't remember that. And don't rich parents, and I'm gonna call you that. Don't rich parents um, try to like one up, like you know, their friend circles. Uh, no. I think so. No, no, you just try to. I mean, you just try to to do go over and beyond and, and do things that you think you would have wanted at that age, right? Because when I had Madison, I, I we didn't have no money; we was dead broke. But we still tried to do as much as possible because you just wanted them to have this, the ponies and this, that, and the other. And then you realize these damn kids don't remember that. I, I think I'd be a rich parent that would try to stunt and show off for the other parents. Yeah, yeah. Jesus, I'm, I'm honest. All right. Well, let's get the show cracking. We got front page news. Tesla and Figaro will be joining us. We got a lot to break down, a lot to talk about today. So don't go anywhere. It's the Breakfast Club on BET. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Now, let's get in some front page news. We got our guest co-host, Claudia Jordan, here. What up, Tiz? 
Good morning, DJ Envy. Good morning, Claudia Good morning. and the Breakfast Club family. Yeah, Charlemagne, we'll be back tomorrow. Now let's jump right into sports. Last night, the Vikings took on the Chicago Bears, and the Bears won 12 to 10. Now let's jump right into Jackson, Mississippi. Yeah, once again, uh, we are talking about Mississippi. Now, because of previous reporting on the family of Dexter Wade's fight for justice, you guys remember that. That is uh, the case where the Jackson Police Department buried him in a pauper's grave and failed to alert the family for months. Um, we had Attorney Crump on the show. We talked about it. Clyde, I know you talked about this story as well. Uh, folks had talked about how you brought this to uh, folks' attention. Now, the same thing has happened to the family of 40-year-old Mario Moore from Jackson. Take a listen. According to the coroner's report, Moore was killed by blunt force trauma to the head. His body was found on the street wrapped in a tarp eight months before his family ever knew. That is so sad. Now, now he was buried in a pauper's grave mm -hmm. behind the county jail without the family's knowledge. I want to give you a little bit more information, but I want you to hear from his mother quickly, Mary Moore Lynn, and what she had to say about it. They put him in a bag and they just dump them in a grave like they're a dog or something. Who gives you the right to do that? He was buried on July 14th, the very same day and location as Dexter Wade. Might I add, they didn't treat him like a dog because white America treats pets, animals far better than they treat black people. Mm. Like it's mm -hmm. far more outrage when you hear abuse of a dog than abuse of a black man mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. woman. Now, authorities say they did make an attempt to contact uh, Mario's father, uh, family, uh, but did not find enough information uh, on how they were able to, uh, you know, get his information. Now, the, the coroner's office said that in a report they did try to call the brother, but the number did not work. A police commander told the family that a detective left a card at Mario's mother's house, but neither his mother or brother or two sisters recall being contacted by anyone. So basically they're saying, you know, that's not true, um, that they were not uh, contacted. And again, they found out in the paper after the other story um had been brought uh to to their attention and before we wrap up it's interesting you just said that claudia because i wanted to play a, a quote by fannie lou hamer about black people and you know how they've been treated in mississippi fannie lou hamer is one of my favorite my favorite uh icon in civil rights and this is what she had to say in 1968 about respecting black men and black women in mississippi take a listen See, Mississippi is not actually Mississippi's problem. Mississippi is America's problem because if America wanted to do something about what has been going on Mississippi, it could have stopped by now. You see, the flag is, is drenched with our blood because, you see, so many of our ancestors was killed because we have never accepted slavery. We had to live on it, but we've never wanted it. So we know that this flag is drenched with our blood. So what the young people are saying now, give us a chance to be young men, respected as a man, as we know this country was built on the black backs of black people across this country. And if we don't have it, you ain't going to have it either because we going to tear it up. That's what they're saying. Mississippi people that are listening, y'all have the blackest state in America. I think it's what, 38%, something like that. Y'all got to take back that state. It's, it's disgusting. It's, you know, it's just it's just disgusting and sad when a family member loses somebody. First and foremost, don't even know if that person is dead. Don't even know if they're missing. And then you find out that person's been dead since February, and they just been thrown in a grave, like 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 you said, like a, like an animal, like a just a dead animal that they dragged off the side of the street and just thrown into a, a, some dirt, which is so disrespectful. So I know we got to go, but what happens next? So so what can the family do now? Well, right now they have retained uh, counsel. Uh, mm -hmm. They've retained Attorney Benjamin Crump. So obviously, um, there's going to be some civil, uh, you know, a civil matter. Uh, more than likely, a lawsuit filed. Right. Um, I know the mayor, who is black, um, said that you know there was just a miscommunication. But they're going to have to do better on this uh, miscommunication. To your point, Claudia, uh, Mississippi is 37.8 percent black. Mm -hmm. uh, and so again, we we keep talking about Mississippi. I, I can't remember but this. It, this has to be like a third or fourth story, like back yeah. to back. You know about what's going on in Mississippi. Um, so again, the communication they're going to have to do better than just put it in the paper. But again multiple issues that we keep dealing with in, in Mississippi and they're having some problems as well that they're asking people to get engaged with as far as the police are concerned so um, just more activism more awareness uh, that we can talk about here on the Breakfast Club because obviously a lot of the mainstream or other media outlets are not covering it at all well, thank you Tez oh. and that is front page news now 
Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, phone lines are wide open. Let us know how you're feeling out there this morning. Again, 800-585-1051. This is where we open up the phone lines and allow you to get it off your chest. Whatever you need to say, call us up right now. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. It's a new day. This is your time to get it off your chest. Wake Wake up. Whether you're mad or blessed. It's time to get up and get something. Call up now. 800-585-1051. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. Hello, who's this? Good morning. This is uh, Lenny out of Georgia. Good morning, Breakfast Club. Good morning, Lenny. How you feeling? Oh, I'm feeling great. I'm just glad that I got through. Um, I have a positive that I want to get off my chest. I had a wonderful Thanksgiving. All six of my kids were home. Everyone is doing good, and I'm just blessed. Hey. And I want to wish everybody a happy holiday. Yeah, my, I had my six kids. My all my six kids were at, at the crib. Both of my uh, older ones were home from college. Let me ask you a question: How long do you 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 leave the Thanksgiving leftovers? When's the last day you eat it? Um, I'm to be honest, I'm gonna give it about two, three days, and that's it. So you threw yours out already? Yes. I threw mine out yesterday. Yesterday was the last <laughs> little bit of food that I ate, and then I had to throw it out. Yeah. And one more thing, DJ Envy. Yes, ma'am. Five of my kids are military, and all of them were able to be home. I love it. That's beautiful. I love it. Well, you have a, yes, blessed, a blessed holiday, Mama. All right, you all, too. Thank you. Hello, who's this? Hey, good morning, DJ Envy. Good What's morning, up, Claudia Jordan. How you doing? Good morning. Yeah, so I just have to get it off my chest. It's my birthday. Hey, oh, happy yeah. birthday, brother. Uh, appreciate you. Happy birthday to Lil Peyton, too. Yeah. Well, how, how, how old are you, brother? I'm 26 this year. 26. What you doing for your birthday? Uh, me and my friends, we having a little dinner at the Brazilian Steakhouse this Saturday. Okay. Uh, All right. Well, going to live it up. Enjoy your birthday. Where you calling from? Uh, Dallas. Dallas. Okay. Oh, I live in Dallas. I'm hey, sure. Hey, but, uh, Envy, Envy. Yes. Do me a favor. Stop embarrassing Logan. I'm no, I'm I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm gonna continue to embarrass Logan. No, I know you and Charlotte play gay games, but the raps with you and OG Rob, mm -hmm. my shit. You don't like the raps? Oh uh, no, I love them. They're entertaining. Okay, They're so entertaining. there you go. But I do gotta <laughs> tell you one thing though before you before you leave, bro, on your birthday. Yeah. Cowboys ain't making it to the Super Bowl. <laughs> Of course they're not. They're trying. Oh, all right. As long as you know. All right. As long as we did in together. Wait, right. who's your team? Who's your team? You live in Dallas. Who's your team? Hey, I got the Seahawks. So I, I ain't talking no merit. Oh, okay. Don't tell that in Dallas. That's why I like you. All right, brother. Have a good one. <laughs> Giants suck, too. Hey, watch your mouth. See, we were cool until you said that. Hello, who's this? Yo, what's up, DJ Envy? This Frank T. What's up, Frank? Get it off your chest. No, I just want to tell the bitter baby mama, man, just because you've been in tune with the baby dad, don't keep the kid away from the dad. It ain't their fault. Oh, you going through it right now? Oh, yeah, man. Well, we back cool now, but it's still a little, it's still a little bit of anger in the air, though. All right. Well, you know, it, once that relationship is good, your relationship with your child will be a lot better, too. I mean, it ain't gonna change with the child regardless. I'm just saying, I just want them to just stop taking the kid away from the dad because it's already gonna hurt them in the end, man. I agree. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, That's you doing what you're supposed saying, to be doing, man. though, right? You making sure you're paying and you're there like you're supposed to? Man, I'm the best dad in the world, man. Best well, dad in the world. You're the second best dad because I'm the best dad in the world, sir. <laughs> All right. Well, we're gonna argue about that one, man. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good one, Frank. You too, man. Get it off your chest. 800 585 1051. If you need to vent, hit us up right now. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. When I get it up. This is your time to get it off your chest. Keep calling. 800 585 1051. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. Hello, who's this? Hey, this is Kalisa DJ Envy. How you doing? Hey, Kalisa. Good morning. How you feeling this morning? Uh, I'm tired because I've been up all night trying to help my brother. The reason why I'm calling in, um, he went to Columbia, which he always go on his girls trip. And somehow he left his phone inside a Uber. Next thing you know, he looked up and he said his cards are being charged. His email, uh, uh, email password's been changed. Been added pass keys. It's, it's so much stuff that's been happening. And, Google don't have no 1-800 number. So it's just a, a advice on what can he do if you have anybody that you um been through this, going to a different country, and somehow all their stuff being compromised in the blink of an eye. I mean, that's a tough one. I mean, the, the, the most important is to make sure the money's safe, right? So call the banks and make sure you, you tell the banks that the, the, the card was actually stolen. 
Uh, so that way they can't take money from your account. If you have Venmo, Cash App, or, or any of those other services, make sure you cancel those. They to make tried sure that. Money's good. They did try, see? Now, as far as the emails... They tried to take 4000 from... But they already took a couple hundred dollars. But thank good. When you got American Express, they're going to give you your money back. Absolutely. Um, That's the most important thing. The now, the email, emails and everything. I don't, I don't know. Like you said... I don't, Google doesn't have an 800 number But I'm sure you could uh, Email them and tell them What the situation is And that you, you got thing And then they'll put you Through like a uh, You know Somewhere you gotta verify Who you are And maybe they can be able To change it that way But that just sucks The verification Is like They changed the, their tel- the telephone number On the verification And changed the email And I'm just like How can they just do It's crazy how they do this In like in a blink of an eye It's so dang quick And now it's like He can't get into None of his business accounts None of his personal emails So it's just is is hectic and he he still he got to fly out he's like i don't even know my flight information because he can't go to his email so it's just so much stuff going on and i'm just trying like what the heck what is our next move well let me just tell you he didn't leave his phone in 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 the uber it sounds like he was that was planned it sounds like that was planned to take his phone and to do that he didn't just leave it in the uber and it was like a come up it seems like somebody was probably watching him he got pickpocketed and that's what they were doing for him yeah that actually could be Get that iPhone. You can mm-hmm. shut it down from wherever you are. That's why I told him I said blink it eyes with the iPhone. That's the one would cut off. Yep. You look at the iPhone, it's locked. Damn, well, I'm sorry you know, for your brother. So Hopefully he makes it back. Well, you know what you're going to have to do? You just got to send all the information to one of his friend's phones, and, and that way they can get back that way. But that just sucks. Every, every time he going to the Samsung, um, what is it, the Samsung, like, uh, where you go and check and uh, lock your phone, they yep. change the password to that. Everything they change the password, he can't access nothing. It has a block. Damn, I'm sorry. So I can dance. Sorry. I'm so but, sorry for yeah, you. Yeah, just for some advice. I, I can't tell you what to do. I've never been in that situation, but I, all I can definitely say is make sure that the banks are safe, so your money's safe, and everything else you just got to figure out when it gets back. Well done, well done. Appreciate you, brother. Have a good morning, mama. Hello, who's this? Hello, this is May. Hey, get it off your chest, mama. Man, look. So, I'm a teacher, mm-hmm. and I have. Uh, these kids pointing on my social media and it's getting a little uncomfortable, I'll be honest with you. Uh, they making pages about me, talking about me sexually. And I ain't posting nothing crazy. I got regular pictures of me, but little boys are being, being who they are. Well, well how old are the and boys? Like, like 12, 13. 12, okay, so the, 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 you know, they, they, they're reaching puberty. And what, what's your Instagram? Let's see. Let's see how crazy this Instagram is. All right. Okay, I see you. You see, is it sexy? Oh, it ain't that. It, it ain't bad at all. But they they're in, they're in proximity with her. They think they see her in person. They see she's attractive. They have their little yeah. minds, their little fantasies. Nah, it's not bad at all. You're not you're not doing anything or over sexualizing yourself or something where you you know where, where the kids are or be or feel a way that I look. I mean, you got your baby on there as well. Nah, you could. I wouldn't I wouldn't worry about that. And that's why I'm like, I feel like I shouldn't be pressed, and I'm. I ain't trying to censor myself and not post what I would normally post because I'm a teacher now like this. Or what you do is you and might I, have to make your page private. But, I mean, you don't have nothing on it. It's not like you got thong pictures on or you in a bikini busting it open or nothing like that. You you, <laughs> you just on there with your baby. You good. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm kind of looking irritated, too, because uh, one of the people who's like a like an SR or whatever, he's decently cool with me. And he told me how him and the principal are going to my social media, scrolling through, and I get they doing their due diligence, but it's about the third time that nah, you tell me this. You ain't got nothing so on like, there. <laughs> you ain't got nothing on, on there crazy e- Even you just say Took some time off Y'all still ain't catch up You ain't saying nothing sexual Or nothing like that Nah you good money You alright That's on them Yeah Really like Let, let me be You but said yeah. what? Alright I said let me be Yeah let mm-hmm. you be I, I ain't mad at you And then like I said You might have to put your page on private So them young boys Don't be, be uh, lusting over you Over there mama But nah your page is good You ain't got nothing to worry about I appreciate y'all You keep posting it And enjoy your babies <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, you can hit us up. Now, we got rumors on the way, Claudia? We do. Uh, Tana Taylor, she is super mad, and we're going to get into it after. Okay, we'll get into all that when we come back. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Charlemagne is out. He'll be back tomorrow. We got our guest co-host, Claudia Jordan, here. And let's get to the rumors. Really this, 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 this is the rumor report. They call me Soldier Boy sometimes because they say it sounds fake, but I swear they're all true. <laughs> On the Breakfast Club, Claudia Jordan stories are crazy. 
If you live long enough, you gotta have stories. That is very true. You know what I mean? Talk to him. All right, Envy, this is kind of sad because I love these two together, but Tiana Taylor is reportedly very unhappy with Iman's legal motion to make the divorce public. She really wanted to keep it on the low. Mm -hmm. uh, so she originally filed uh, for divorce in January, identifying herself and Iman by their initials to keep everything private. She did not want it to get on the press, and she wanted to protect the children. You know, mm -hmm. she's definitely a great mom. However, the divorce became public when Iman's legal team filed a motion for their initials to be replaced with their full names, no longer making it private. Uh, Tiana addressed the matter on her Instagram story, asking fans to respect her privacy and her children. How do you feel about that? I mean, I get both sides. And, you know, she wanted to keep it private. She has kids and she wants things to work out in her family. And some things she probably doesn't want out in the public. But on the other side, I'm sure they probably both might be seeing other people. Mm -hmm. They both might be dating. So if you see a mom pop up with a, another woman people are gonna say he's cheating mm -hmm. and he probably didn't want that rap either with some of the other things that he's doing so he was probably like let's make this public so that i can move on and i can date and i can see other people and people in the public won't be looking at me as a cheater and understand that we're not together but now in 2023 like there's so many people that are okay with cheaters like they're like it's not really an embarrassment anymore yeah but he, he might not he might not want that he might not want that look or you know? he might be seeing somebody that you know or she might be seeing somebody he's like i know that they're going to be seen soon so i don't want to be looking like a sucker so let's just put it out there let the public know so that if we're out and about with other people it's understood i hate when you are with someone and you have an agreement like okay we're going to keep this private and then one goes against that you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. then you feel that's like major portrayal. But I do see both sides of it. You do? Mm -hmm. <sighs> the public, though, once they get involved, it's just a hot mess. It is. All right. Our girl Tiffany Haddish is uh, seeking help after her second DUI. She was arrested early Friday morning at the, after the Beverly Hills Police Department received a call about her car stopped in the middle of the Beverly Drive with the driver appearing to be asleep at the wheel. Got a clip. That's Tiffany handcuffed and taken into custody by two Beverly Hills police officers. The arrest footage obtained by TMZ was shot at about 5.45 a.m. Friday morning. Authorities say Tiffany was stopped in the middle of the street and appeared to be found slumped over the wheel while her car engine was still running. The comedian was charged on suspicion of DUI and released a few hours later. The 43-year-old had performed the night before at the Laugh Factory. Tiffany's take, while well, I spoke exclusively to her this morning, she says it was a long Thanksgiving day that started with feeding underprivileged people at the Laugh Factory. She also claims that her Tesla parked itself when she dozed off but was blocking a portion of the street. And by the way, Tiff also had nothing but praise for the way the Beverly Hills Police Department handled the incident. Yeah, I'm uh, very nervous and very concerned about Tiffany Haddish. Of course, she's a friend to the room. Um, mm -hmm. We're not friends. I don't, I don't speak to her often uh, unless she's up here, but it scares me, right? And the reason I say it scares me is, is this is, like I think, the second DUI. Mm -hmm. And it's just telling me that she's not making great decisions after drinking. And the problem with that is I look at uh, former WWE uh, Sonny, mm -hmm. uh, who's actually in the WWE Hall of Fame yesterday. Just yesterday, she was sentenced to 17 years in prison for a manslaughter case. Allegedly, she was driving. She was drunk. She crashed into a back of a car and the person that she crashed into died. But this wasn't her first time, right? No, nah, but that wasn't her first time. She had previously been arrested at least six times prior for impaired driving. So that's why they thought gave her so much time, 17 years. But, you, you know, you think about it. She was arrested six times prior. This is number two for Tiffany Haddish. Like this is when whoever her friends in the industry are or whoever's going out with her, whether it's a stylist, her best friend, whoever it may be, need to be like, nah, nah, B, you can't drive. Nah, B, we taking an Uber tonight. Nah, B, we getting car service. Because we don't want to see, you know, somebody that we love so much and that we appreciate so much get into a, a situation where they go to jail or kill somebody or kill themselves, you know? And she's she's definitely had a hard year or so, you know, mm -hmm. and I understand maybe wanting to dull the pain. That's definitely what an artist would do. Mm -hmm. But um, she is... We don't want to see that in number two already. Oh, we have the Sunny report. Okay, yeah. So this is uh, I was just telling you about the former WWE. Her name is Diva Sunny. Now you can go into the report of what happened with her yesterday. Former WWE star is finding out late today that she will spend more than a decade behind bars. Tammy Sitch was sentenced following a crash last year that killed a 75-year-old man from Daytona Beach. At the time of the crash, police said her blood alcohol content was three and a half times the legal limit. News 6's Molly Reed was in the courtroom. 
Tamara Sitch is now heading to prison for the next 17 and a half years, followed by eight years of probation. Now, she spoke in court here today apologizing to that family, but the family of the victim tells me that nothing that happened today will fix or ever make them feel better about what happened. Prosecutors say Sitch was driving drunk in Ormond Beach in March of 2022 when she crashed into a car that was stopped at a red light, killing that driver, 75-year-old Julian Fran Lasseter. Police say Sitch was four Four times the legal limit. Prosecutors say this was her fourth DUI in 10 years and she was driving on a suspended license. This is my worst nightmare. And when I was younger, mm -hmm. full disclosure, I definitely had a few times where I should have had a you know car service or mm -hmm. a cab, whatever. You know, you're young and you know, I, I can make it, I'm good. I will never take that chance now. Even sleepy driving mm -hmm. is like drunk driving. Yeah. You know? Because imagine waking up from that and you found out you killed somebody. Right. I mean, and it, see, when when you are younger, and I was younger, we didn't have Uber, Uber and Lyft and things like that. You had to find a taxi cab in New York City; that was almost impossible. Or you had to try to find car service, which was way too expensive. But now there's so many different options. But like when I see that, and you, you just think about you, the family, and your relative dies, and then the person that did it got arrested four times before that for the same thing, right? Nah, you can't forgive that. That person has to get the book, and that's why they got 17 years. And that and that person, uh, whatever whatever her name is, Diva Sunny, will never be able to drive again. Mm -hmm. They took her, her license permanently, and that is your rumor report. But yeah. I hope Tiffany gets the, the help that she needs, and I hope that her friends around her hugs her, holds her, and make sure that they support her and protect her to make sure she's not in that situation again. Because we love Tiffany. She's funny yeah. as hell. She's a great actress. She's a star, but we just want to make sure that she stays that way. All yeah. right. All right, and uh, she clearly needs some support from her friends and some love because I think she's going through it. And Tiffany, we love you. We no. just don't want anything bad to happen to you. There you go. All right, when we come back, we got front page news. Tesla and Figaro will be joining us, so don't go anywhere. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Charlemagne is out. He will be back tomorrow. Now, let's get in some front page news. What up, Tiz? Good let's jump right into it. Sports last night, the Bears beat the Vikings 12 to 10. Now let's talk about Giving Tuesday. Yes, today is Giving Tuesday on a lighter note. So, you know, we had Cyber Monday, we had Black Friday. We want to remind people this is one of the most important days of the year. Um, but nonprofits and industry groups say that donations are far down compared to previous years. So a lot of the nonprofits have been struggling, but they're looking to make up the difference today on Giving Tuesday. Now, Tuesday, Giving Tuesday is the Tuesday after Thanksgiving. Um, this started as a hashtag in 2012, um, and it has grown into one of the biggest fundraising dates on the calendar. Many nonprofits will be running matching campaigns so certainly look to see if some of your nonprofits will match that and that means that obviously if you give five they'll give five Now some of the nonprofits won't have the resources to do that but still you know I encourage folks to give anyway small donations really do make a difference I know people say you know oh what what is five or ten dollars what it really does add up um, the giving USA report found that fewer people are donating as well uh, with less than half of Americans given to charity in 2022 compared to the two-thirds who gave in 2000 you know, when the, the, the trend really picked up. So mm -hmm. if you have today, um, give to your favorite charity. And if you don't know who to give to, uh, you know, just try to, I guess, think about what is most important to you. Is it social justice? Is it homeless? Is it uh, prison reform? I can name a lot of organizations uh, that I, I suggest people support. But find something and give $5 if you can to make you feel better. Yeah, and not only that, I, I always tell people all the time, a lot of people out there have kids, and, and a lot of times their kids outgrow things. And we all always mm -hmm. think about, what am I doing with this, uh, whether it's an old stroller or some old clothes or an old crib? People need that type of thing. So those things are so expensive right now. So if you have things that your kids have outgrown, instead of tossing them out, instead of throwing them out and getting rid of them, give it to somebody who actually needs it. Like, I'm, I'm a, well, my whole kid's nursery, because I'm done with kids, I'm not having no more. So my whole kid's right. nursery, I'm, I'm going to give to a family, uh, me and my wife just going to figure out how we gonna do but we just want to give it to a family that we can help that somebody might, that might not be able to afford a crib or a dresser or a bassinet or all the things that that we have for our children so just give give to somebody who might need it and know? we waste so much so that's that's dope that you do that mm -hmm. that you find yourself growing mm -hmm. like I, I, we waste food mm -hmm. clothes and just we replace them but we don't really do much with them as far as giving them away that's right great idea mm -hmm. one, of, one of my favorite things to do I'm sure you guys have probably done this before I love when I'm going through a drive through you know getting coffee or something like that paying for the person behind you yep um, that really makes a difference hopefully the bill's not too big but too large for folks but that's something even at the very simplest thing You're you know right. you can do you just never know how you brighten up you know the 
the person behind you what kind of day they're having. So at the very least, maybe try that. Pay it forward. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Now let's talk about Honda. Yeah, once again, I, I, I try to look at these recalls, uh, guys, because, again, we have so many listeners, and especially when it's a car that is common that a lot of folks drive. Uh, here's one that I found with Honda recalling 300,000 cars uh, due to seatbelts. Obviously, that's a major issue, not having a working seatbelt. So if you are driving a 2003 or 2024 Honda HRV or an Accord, uh, they are missing a pretensioner retention of rivets now that is the seat belt component that tightens it into place during an accident so obviously that's very very important mm-hmm. now this defective piece uh, can cause a risk of injury in the event of a collusion uh collision uh, honda said that they have put out a notice but wanted to let uh everyone know that yes if you are driving that vehicle please you know go get it looked at again 2023 and 2024 accord or hrv okay now, yesterday, mm-hmm. Tez, I was uh, dropping off my, my daughter at dance. And on the way back, uh, there was a 1986 Honda Accord on the side of the road, light blue, which was my first car. You know, wow. I pulled over and taped it because I felt like I was a kid again. 1986, right. it had uh, roll-up windows. It had cloth. But that was my baby back then. And that car was in beautiful condition. It only had 60,000 miles on it. The guy who had it had preserved it for that long. The car was beautiful. He wouldn't yeah. sell it to me though, but the car was beautiful. I just, I just got out and just started video. You tried to, oh, you tried to get him to sell it. To I definitely. Me. He I, was, he was like, no, that's my car, sir. I'm not getting rid of it. But I feel like yeah. Hondas were a lot of people's first. That, that was my first car too. Honda. The not fifth too. year didn't work. My interest rate was probably 25 percent because I had bad credit. Yep. But I love my Honda. I love my little Honda. Me too. That was my first car that I bought. You know, like by myself. You, you know, too? at the oh, Honda Del Sol. Yeah, the Hemi don't. Hemi don't remember the Honda Del Sol. But it was a fly car. It had the little drop top. I can't remember. You don't. You don't remember, remember the Honda Del Sol. Del Sol. They we, had a little pickup in them. We had Accord, Civics, yeah. and Preludes. I don't remember Del Sol. Cute know. little two seater. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, that is front page news. Thank you, Tiz. Thank you. Have a good one. All right. Now, when we come back, we got to talk about love a little bit. Now, this conversation comes from Claudia Jordan. You was out last night with your friend. I went out with a girlfriend of mine. Her name is Sonia, and she said I can use her name, so it's okay. So she used to be a model on Deal and Deal with me back in the, in the day. Former Miss Venezuela, beautiful girl, and she got married. Okay. She was married. She was over there in London, and, you know, everything was fine. Anyway, she took some medication and had a weird reaction, mm-hmm. woke up paralyzed. Wow. Um, lost all the strength in her legs, and she's been going through therapy. It's been really tough for her because she had the glamorous, beautiful life, like, mm-hmm. you know, the perfect life. Anyways, she's getting a divorce. Her husband mm-hmm. said that the wheelchair turns him off. Really? And it got me thinking. I told her, I said, do not take it personal. That man married your outside, not your inside. Facts. So I want to know, I want to like talk to people about that. Okay. You know, I feel like a lot of people, uh, does your person love your outside or your inside? Let's talk about it. 800-585-1051. Um, men and women, if you were in a relationship, you were married, and the person that you were married to becomes paralyzed, where they need you for everything, would you stay in that relationship? Probably, maybe not be able to have sex. Maybe not be able to do the things that you were able to do before. Would you still stay? That's why I always tell people, you want to be in a relationship for love. And it, it sounds so cliche. Yeah, I want to love somebody. I want to love this. But a lot of people are in it for the wrong reason, right? They're in it for the looks. Uh, they're in it for the money. They're in it for what they think they can get out of it. But looks fade, you know, and sometimes health fades. And that's what you want to be in a relationship for, regardless of, of what happens to you, whether you get old or you have cancer or you can't take care of yourself. You want that person to be there wiping the drool off your mouth, uh, being able to wipe your ass if you need it. And that's what you should be looking for in a relationship. Money comes, money goes. I think we've all been in a situation where sometimes we had it, mm-hmm. sometimes we didn't. And you want to be there for love. And let's talk about it. 800-585-1051. So let's say the situation happened with you. Your spouse was... You know, not as pretty as as she was before. He's not as handsome or his, you know, he he became paralyzed. His penis didn't work or you couldn't have sex. Would you still stay in that relationship or is it like, nah, this is just too much for me. I got to leave. Let's be honest. Let's discuss. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. It's topic time. Call 800-585-1051 to join into the discussion with The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Charlemagne is out. He'll be back tomorrow. But Claudia Jordan is here. And last night, you went out to uh, dinner with your friend. My friend, Sonia. Yeah, so she was a model with me on Deal and Odeal. Beautiful girl, former Miss Venezuela. 
I just say that to say she had a really busy and popping life. She was, she was a, a model. She's a model mm -hmm. and a gorgeous girl. Had her own swimwear line, everything. Anyways, some weird thing happened with her where she woke up with major inflammation on her spine and she's paralyzed. She's in a wheelchair now. Mm -hmm. So sad. She's married. Mm -hmm. Nine years. Her husband has totally just treated her like crap now. Where I get things change the dynamic of your relationship, mm -hmm. but I feel like he's not even behaving like she was even ever a friend. Like he's just throwing her away. Yeah. Uh. And I, I got to thinking like, could I be ride or die with someone that, you know, the status change. I know when you're married, you say for better, for worse, for right. sickness and health. But do really, do people really rock with their vows like that? Do you think? Yeah, they should. I mean, I would say this, and I I don't know the situation from what you telling what what you're telling me. To me, that sounds like uh, a, a gentleman that was in that relationship not because of love, mm -hmm. but because of lust, right? And I think that's really uh, coward moves. And, and the reason I say that is when you get married, you want to marry somebody for them. Right. Because we all know looks fade. We all know anything can happen at any given time. People get old. They have complications. People get cancer. And that's what you're marrying. You're marrying your soulmate that regardless of what happens in this world, they stand by your side. Right. Uh, and the fact that she became paralyzed and now he doesn't want to deal with her because he said it's not attractive anymore. It kind of makes to me, it makes him a coward. Right. Mm -hmm. Because you're marrying somebody because of who they are, not what they look like. You're marrying somebody because of, of the love and, and, and how that person makes you feel, not what they got. You're not marrying money. You're not marrying cars or bags or shoes or looks or any of that. You're marrying a person because you're going to grow old. Like you, your looks are going to fade. Your boobs are going to you know hit the floor. Your, your, your testicles are going to hit the floor. Like it's not going to be the same. You know, your penis ain't going to work every day when you get older. While you're playing, there's a lot of 30 year olds that are having that problem right now. We were just talking about that with some ladies in the studio. Jesus Christ. I'm going to say this. Like mm -hmm. I, I, I get you. You can you you have every right to say I'm not as attracted anymore mm -hmm. to you physically. Mm -hmm. I understand that, and everyone has needs. She can still have sex. She can still mm -hmm. do these types of things, and it's not a permanent paralysis. It's something that with therapy she could get through this. Right. That's when you need the person that you marry to have your back and to work with you and get you back. Yeah, but the the problem with that is he, it seems like he's missing the 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 vision, mm -hmm. the gram. The I got a beautiful Venezuelan that I hold on my hand and she wears a beautiful dress and she looks amazing and we're at red carpets and we're at the beach and he doesn't have that anymore. He told her the wheelchair is a turnoff for me. Yeah. I'm sure it's a turnoff for her as well. You know, yes. I just I don't get how you can say you love someone so much and then throw them away. Well, that's not love. He, he, he He's not in love with her. That That was lust. He loved her for what she looked like. And when that love is not there because her looks are not there, he's out. I mean, I'm, it's, it's effed up to say, but I'm glad she figured it out now than figured it out 20 years from now, mm -hmm. you know? But for, for me and, and my wife, who, who I met at 16 and, and she was 15, it doesn't matter. Like, we've been up, we've been down, we have money, we didn't have money. I don't care about how my wife looks. She doesn't care about how I look. I don't care if she gains weight, which she never does. She doesn't care if I gain weight, which I do all the time. I mean, it is what it is. Like, we're in it for love. And I look at my parents the same way. My pa my dad's about to be 83 uh, December 1st on Friday. And my mom don't care. My mom don't care how my dad looks. My, if, if Whatever my dad needs, my mom is there. Whatever my mom needs, my dad is And that's how it should be. She loves his soul. Loves his soul. And I don't know if she loves his soul. She might hate him right now because they've been married so long. They probably hate each other. But no, I'm just joking. But she got to love him to go they through the it. times where you Absolutely. hate that person too, right? Absolutely. It, uh, it, it it just it it really it just really disappoints me, you know, because that's where you need your person the most. And you see these eighty year old people been mm -hmm. married, you know, thirty, forty, fifty years. They had to go through some things that were really bad. I don't know. Well, let's go to the phone lines. Uh, we have Nathan on the line. Hello, who's this? Hi, I wanted I wanted to answer the question about could I be with somebody who was had a mental disability? Okay, talk to us. So I was thinking like um, I don't think. After I marry someone or get in a relationship, if they're completely normal and something were to happen to them, I was thinking, like, why would I lower my happiness? Because, you know, I have to take care of someone who became disabled or something happened. Like, I know it sounds bad, like, because you're supposed to do this out of love. But then what about yourself? You lose yourself trying to take care of someone because something happened to them i was just trying to picture myself in a scenario and i don't know if i could do that for the long haul 
Now, I mean, you, you got to think about it like this. Let's say you married for 10 years. You find your soulmate and you're with them for love, right? You're not with them for looks. You're not with them for money. And then something happens. Like in this world, ish happens. Let, let, let's say he became paralyzed or you became paralyzed. Would you want that man to be like, you know what? You wasn't the same person I met 10 years ago. I'm out. Or would you want him to be led like, look, I, I married you for you. Not because of your legs. Not because of the fact that you could walk or jump. Things happen and I'm going to be a rider until the end wouldn't you want that in a relationship or marriage i would want that for myself but then i kind of feel like that's being selfish a little bit because then you know you become so needy your partner has to you have to, you already have to become selfless but your partner has to almost like give up his life for you i just feel like that's not fair now if i was in that situation where something were to happen to me and i'm in a wheelchair and I would just feel so bad for my partner. I, I wouldn't even be upset if my partner left. Do I want my partner to leave me? No. But it, I feel like that's kind of being selfish because then he got to just give up his whole life just to take care of my disabled life. I just kind of feel like that's not fair. Isn't that kind of what you I, I, I Thank you for being honest because mm -hmm. what you're saying is honest and it's not the popular thing. Like I, I, I see people getting mad about that. But it's honest, right? But isn't that what you sign up for when you get married? Correct. I get relationships. Yeah, kind of. When you get married, you're hoping for something like that not to happen. Not saying that's going to happen. Sometimes something, you know, a freak accident or something could happen. But I just, you know, deep down, I do feel like it's being a little bit selfish unless your partner, you know, there's people that would be like, okay, I can do this for the rest of my life. That's fine. I can, I can not care about myself and you know, not care about my happiness and give up my life to take care of the disabled person. That's understandable. That's, that's I guess, the way it's supposed to be. But I'm thinking about my, uh, you know, you thinking about them giving up their whole life just to everything will have to revolve around you, basically. And you just will have to, that's being a little bit selfish, I feel like. I don't know. All right. Well, we appreciate your honesty. But I think part of being married is you're supposed to stay with the vows, right? And, and I could say that a zillion and one times. And right. people break their vows all the time. They cheat and, and do all types of things. But it's also, you know, for, for sickness and health, right? And that's big because yeah. we do get sick and, and we do go through things. And, and a lot of times that person that you want by your side is your wife. You know what I mean? I know regardless of what happens okay. with me, whether I get sick or, or whatever it may be, my wife is going to be there regardless because she's only there for me. She's not there for anything else. She's not there for the look. She's not there for the money. She was with me at 15, 16. You know, she's with me regardless. And, and, and that's a calming. That makes me be able to, you know, be able to sleep at night. And, and that should, that you should want yeah. the same. Like somebody that, if something does happen, you drive down the highway tomorrow and something happens, you want somebody to be like, uh, whatever you, what's your name? My name is Shanika. Hey, Shanika, I love you regardless, Shanika. I don't care what happened, whether your vagina works or you got one leg or, you know, you, you lose your hair. It doesn't matter. I'm with Shanika because I love Shanika. You know what I mean? Right, right. I, I understand that. I do. Um, it's just that, you know, not everybody think like that, but I'm just being honest. I just tried to put myself in that scenario and I don't think deep down um, it, it would just take away my happiness. It just would just take away my life I feel like and I don't know. I just wouldn't want that for me and I will understand if the per if it happened to me. If, if the person would want to leave me, I would completely understand. I wouldn't even be that upset. I will understand. I so that. I get it. Right. Well, thank you, Shaniqua. You're welcome. Thank you. you have a good morning. 800-585-1051. You heard Shaniqua. What are your thoughts? Let's discuss. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. It's topic time. Call 800-585-1051 to join into the discussion with The Breakfast Club. Let's talk about it. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. If you're just joining us, we're talking about Claudia Jordan, who is guest hosting this morning. Charlemagne is out. He's back tomorrow. Uh, she went out to dinner with a friend last night. And what happened during that conversation? You told us so much about your friend, Sonia. So she's paralyzed. And um, it could be something that she could walk again eventually with therapy. She was married for nine years. And the husband said he's just not attracted anymore. He mm -hmm. says the wheelchair weirds him out. Mm -hmm. And this is something that happened to her, you know? 
And I just felt so bad. Like imagine like you're minding your business, you get in a car accident, somebody hits you and you're disabled now and your person leaves you for something mm -hmm. that happened to you. Yeah. And I just try to put myself in those shoes, you know? Yeah, I couldn't leave my wife if she was in a wheelchair. I would try to make that wheelchair so damn fun. <laughs> like I'd be trying to, 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 to knock her off on the wheelchair, her holding it one way, me holding it the other way. And I, I mean, you, you try to, I mean, ish happens in life and, and, that's, I, I would say, part of the responsibility of being married is to make sure that your wife or your husband is good. And whatever I would have to, to do to make her life as normal as possible, I would try to do, and leaving wouldn't be one of it. We have Daisy on the line. Daisy, good morning. Hi, good morning. Can you hear me? I can hear you clearly, Daisy. Good morning. What's your thoughts? <laughs> so, um, I've been with my person for 22 years. We've been married for 20. And I honestly believe that if you like your person outside of who they are to you, like who they are to the earth, there's nothing you cannot get through. You know, I, I adore my husband. There's nothing I wouldn't do for him, but I like him genuinely as a human being. So you're not going anywhere? Hell no. Nah. You're going to do I a love Diamantha. Thank you, Tuff. You're going to do a handstand on that wheelchair? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yes, see, sir. See, that's Until a, day I die. Me, that's a wife right there. It is. That's a wife. Grace. Good morning, Grace. Good morning. What's your thoughts, Grace? Well, my thoughts is when you marry somebody for all the right reasons, whether they're sick or not, you will stay and do what you have to do. You won't leave. You won't even consider leaving. My husband had a stroke seven years ago. Mm -hmm. And when he had to have a brain surgery, he ended up totally bedridden mm -hmm. in the first part of it. He had a straight, a, a a trach, he came home with a trach, a feeding tube, a urine bag, um, unable to do anything for himself. And I nursed him back to good health. On top of working, on right top now, of taking care of the kids, still, on top of all that. On top of all of that, and I wasn't working, he was the one working at the time. And then he needed 24 hour nursing. How was I gonna pay back to go and work? So I had to, nurse him 24 hours and trust God to pay the bills and do everything else. And I stayed. Mm. I never once contemplated leaving. I respect you, Grace. But that's what we should do as, as a married couple, correct? We're supposed to take care of our partner regardless of what's going on. Yes. And remember, read the vows and, and, and let it set in before you do it so you can really understand what you're putting, what you're saying you're about to do through sickness and in health, rich, poor, no matter what you're saying, I am going to be with this person. Absolutely. Read the vows. And, and how's he doing and now, Grace? Sure it's that same. Pardon me? How's he doing now? Well, he still has no left side movement, but he's talking. He, he can comprehend and understand. And I'm still trusting God for his complete healing. There you go. Grace, where you from? You sound like you're from the Caribbean. What island? I'm from Nassau, Bahamas. You're from the Bahamas. Okay, where you live now? Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Fort Lauderdale, okay. God bless you. Can, can, can me and uh, Claudia pay for your, your lunch and his lunch today? Some Caribbean yes. food, maybe some oxtail or jerk chicken or something like that? Thank you. Okay, give me your cash app. We're going to uh, put some money in absolutely. your cash app. And we're going to pay for your Uber Eats today. Hold on, let me get a pin. I love hearing that because I feel like people are so quick to throw each other away. Absolutely. And I, I guarantee you the progress that he has made was a big part. A big part of that was because of your love on him. You know? Absolutely. What's your cash app? I'm, I'm going to put some money in your cash app to pay for your lunch today. It's dollar sign Bolera. B-O-L. B-O-L. E-R-A. E-R-A? Yes. Uh-huh. W-I-L-M-O-R-E. Okay, I'm going to send you some money, and I appreciate you, Grace. I hear it all in your voice that you love that man. That man is so lucky to have you, a woman by like you by his side, and we appreciate We've you. We've been together from high school, so I, I love him. That's like me and my wife as well. <laughs> well, you hold, you hold on a lot, and thank you so much, Grace, for sharing your story. Thank you. Hold on, okay? Okay. Wow. Oh, I'm about to cry in this show today. Oh, my goodness. This is my street cred. All right, well... <laughs> All right. Well, for all the people out there, you should be together for love. And I know it's easy to love somebody because of the way that they look or love somebody because of their money. But remember, there's nothing more than loving the soul. And you should find somebody that you want to love this soul to the day that they die. And I love my wife to the day that she dies. I love her soul. So 
And you don't have to get married if no. you're not ready for that. That's you true. don't have to. Like, That's right. Just date someone, but then we can understand your some timiness. But I can't understand it once you make those vows. Absolutely. You know? Well, we got rumors on the way. What are we talking about in the rumors? Meg Thee Stallion. She's making some big changes when it comes to sex. Okay. Mm -hmm. And also, Charlemagne is out. So if you want to give somebody Donkey of the Day, 800-585-1051. You can give them Donkey right now. Call us up uh, and give whoever you want Donkey today. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Charlemagne's out. He's back tomorrow. Claudia Jordan's our guest co-host. And let me just uh, salute to my uh, baby, Pepe. Pepe, and today is... Uh, Peyton's birthday. I know they listen on their way to school. So happy birthday, Pepe. She's two today. Aw, so cute. And she's a huge Paw Patrol lover. She loves Paw Patrol. That's our thing. Every night before she goes to sleep, we watch about an uh, episode or two of Paw Patrol. I don't even know what that is. Paw Patrol, Paw Patrol, beat it in a... Is it double or hubble? Hurl, hubble, Paw Patrol. Uh, no problem too big, no pup too small. Paw Patrol is on the road. No? Yeah, sure. No. All right, well, let's get to the room, Miss Forget y'all. <laughs> Listen up, everyone. I mean, where did I really the start? This, this, this is the rumor report. They call me Soldier Boy sometimes because they say it sounds fake, but I swear they're all true. Jesus. On the Breakfast Club. All right, Jordan stories are crazy. If you live long enough, you gotta have stories. That is very true. You know what I mean? Very true. Let's talk. Let's talk. Talk to him. I enjoyed you singing Paw Patrol, looking very uncomfortable towards the end, when no one could co-sign you. Nobody else knows. All right, fine. Like, sure. There's some parents out there that sing it with me, though. <laughs> All right, hey, Meg Thee Stallion, making some changes. She says she is done with the streets. During a recent live stream on her Instagram, Meg Thee Stallion opened up about her sex life and how fans respond to it. It's like nobody be listening to my music. They be like, oh, Megan Thee Stallion, I cannot believe she likes to have sex. <laughs> I cannot believe Megan Thee Stallion. <laughs> no, but I am turning over, you know, a new leaf. And I'm stingy with the yet. I'm not a freak anymore. I'm done. I'm done with the shreds. So toxic in the shreds. All right, now this comes shortly after her ex, Party Fontaine, released a song alleging that one of the issues in the relationship was Megan's sexual activity. And supported Party while others were really mad at him and said he was being tacky for dissing Meg. What you think? Um, I think she put out that song, what was it, Cobra or something mm -hmm. like that? And people, I guess maybe he felt that like that was going at him. So this is his response. But I don't blame Megan this time to say where she going to... She gonna, you know, keep the kitty or hide the kitty or, or not having sex like that because outside of party, because we all know that she was in a relationship with party, but she's been linked to a bunch of individuals in this industry. And that's probably because those individuals were talking. Mm -hmm. And I, I've never seen guys talk so much. Like, it, it, that was never a thing growing up. It, but now it's like, it. people talk so much. Oh, I w I've been with Megan. I've been with Megan. I've been with Megan. I know Megan's looking like, why don't you just shut up? You know, like it just people talk to like let's just shut up now the girls are kind of downplaying and not really bragging like they used to it and kind the dudes of, it's like are. a reversal yeah, yeah and the dudes are and I think it's real bitchy like to the fact that so many guys have done it and, and, and it's and you see it more and more and more and more and more and it's just it's not it's not it's not, it's not a, a, a masculine trait but the guys that are doing this uh, there's an argument to be made that she's a bigger star than them yeah true you know mm-hmm all right, Andre 3000's flute album outsells several mainstream rappers. Andre 3000 released an album recently, and it wasn't what most rap fans were expecting. It was an album with no rapping, just him playing the flute. Now, some fans expressed their disappointment on social media, sharing that they wanted bars from Dre 3000 after waiting almost 17 years for an album. But it turns out he doesn't need bars because his flute album outsold several rap albums first week of sales that were released this year. And uh, here's whose albums he outsold for the week. Ice Spice, mm -hmm. um, Nas, Lil Wayne, mm -hmm. French Montana, and Kodak Black. Oh, congratulations. Yeah. Congratulations to Andre 3000. Drop a bomb for Andre 3000. I mean, I will say this. Some people will be like, I mean, as soon as Andre 3000 pops up on your title, your Spotify, or, or your Apple Music, you're going to click it because you're going to think it's new music. So, But you have to listen. And somebody told me this yesterday. You have to listen to an album 10 times for it to be one sale. So people are actually listening to it. I tried to listen to it. Did you listen to it? Not yet. I couldn't get jiggy with it. I heard people like, no, you don't like it? The first song, it took the flute a long time to come in pause. And I was waiting for a minute. And I, by that time, I was already out the zone. Uh, so you wanted the flute sooner? Yeah. 
yeah, applause. But I, I'm, I'm gonna give it another shot. I'm gonna give it another chance. But I just couldn't. I couldn't get jiggy with with. I love Andre 2000. I love him as a rapper though, and mm-hmm. I just that's just not my thing. And you know, and and it's gonna be some things for some people and some. I didn't hear everybody bumping it on their way to Thanksgiving dinner. I I didn't hear DJs mixing it. You know, I didn't hear. But I guess it's one of those things you relax, you put it on when you're just trying to. Me- meditate or get in the mood I just wasn't in that mood this week well I guess he's talking about being evolved like he can't rap about the things he used to anymore Correct. which he's actually aware of that you uh, still have some 40, 50 year old people that still talk that they still in the streets at 20, in their 20s right? right that's true I'm gonna try to give it a listen I'll try again <sighs> alright Young Thug's Rico trial started with opening statements yesterday it was eventful as soon as it started the prosecution reportedly did not provide all the information in their opening statements ahead of time because of that Young Thug's attorney motion for a mistrial which was denied by the judge speaking of the judge the judge in this case brought his emotional support dog and introduced him to the people in the courtroom Right here behind me is this bell that starts jingling. And if you hear a jingling sound like a bell, please don't think that I'm doing anything creepy up here. I have a service dog behind me. His name is Jack. I think some of you may have seen him already. He is, uh, he lives the best life ever. He's pampered. He is a Labrador retriever. He's about two, almost two and a half, three years old at this point in time. But if you hear that bell, that's him moving around. He doesn't bark. He rarely might get, he rarely gets interested in what's going on, so he might come up here and look, but that's about it. Don't bring him any food either, okay? All right? He is spoiled rotten, so um, please don't try and throw any food back here behind me or anything like that. He doesn't need anything else, okay? Um, if I'm on trial, I have Rico charges. I don't want to hear about your dog. Seriously. Atlanta's different. Atlanta, Atlanta's is definitely, definitely different. Yeah, and I, and I agree with you. You're a judge, right? And judges hear the most gruesome crimes. They hear everything that you could possibly hear, whether it's murder, whether it's uh, rape, whether it's sexual assault, whether it's kidnapping. And judges are supposed to take that. They're supposed to judge off their best opinion and, and look at the facts. Now, the fact that he has a comfort dog there, that would make me uncomfortable. Why do you need an emotional support dog to do your job in court? That, uh, would, make, that would make me uncomfortable. So does he go to the dog for... for <laughs> You know, for for facts, does the, does the dog help him make a decision? Like that would make me uncomfortable. The fact that a judge who's supposed to be clear minded and see things on both sides and needs a comfort dog to sit in trial. Do you believe in emotional support animals? I period? don't. I don't. It's just an excuse to be able to bring your dog uh, in for free, right? Yes, and and anybody could buy that vest on the internet and say your dog is emotionally a a, a comfort dog, and you can make up a, a, a fake letter. They don't check. I you tried can, to you get can. my cat in the plane with that letter. It, it works. Yeah. As long as you have a vest. Yeah. It works. <laughs> like you can have a pit bull. And if the pit bull has a vest on and you have a, a fake letter, because they don't check, it's not like they call them, but let me call the doctor right now. No. You you can go with a fake letter and that pit bull can sit next to you on a plane. That makes no sense. I don't believe in a comfort dog. You don't need no damn comfort dog. People come with comfort roosters and comfort cats. And peacock. Comfort, Someone comfort had a peacock. peacock. Yeah, this is just a comfort pig. This is getting too much. It's, it's getting too much. So you're comfortable, but now I'm not. Correct. All right. Well, hey, that's the rumor report there. I will say this. Atlanta's Atlanta. I've never heard that. I've never heard a judge come to court with a comfort dog talking about, hey, the, the dog might bark, but don't worry about it. Just don't. Uh, Atlanta's Atlanta. And did a whole monologue on his damn dog. I'm sitting here worrying about if I got life. All right. Well, that is your rumor report. Charlemagne is out. If you want to give somebody donkey today, 800-585-1051. Whoever you want to give donkey today to, call us now. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. It's your time to nominate a donkey of your own. Remember now, that's just how they choose. Call in now. 800-585-1051. Hello, who's this? This is Darina. Hey, Darina. Who you want to give donkey to? Um, I need to give... I've been trying to do this for a while, but I need to give donkey of the day to you, DJ MV. Me? Uh-huh. Why? Uh-huh. Because, so I forget who was there, but you guys were talking about, um... You were talking about how if somebody's bullying your kid and how you teach your kids to stand up for yourself. Oh, okay. Rightfully so. Mm-hmm. And you said to say... That's why your mom drives a Camry. <laughs> I drive a Camry. <laughs> and it's actually pretty nice. Like, it's, 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 I mean, it's 2019, but it's my Camry. It's clean. The so, clean. I got you. I was like, yes, my wheels are clean. I mean, 
you know. It is the fact he <laughs> is, right and Envy is a car snob, I'll though. take that. I'll take that. I'm sorry, Doreen. I cannot believe you did that, but I've been trying to tell you that all day. And literally today, I sent you a message on Instagram and Gia a message on Instagram because you were talking about uh, your baby furniture. Yep. And my daughter's about to have a, a little boy in April. But, you know, I was telling you that I was going to give you Dunky today if you reply to me. And finally, I got through because I've been trying to get through since you said that. Well, I'm sorry, and sh- salute to all the moms <laughs> that drive Camrys. I appreciate you. Yeah, but but Gia and I are gonna be giving away our uh, all the nursery stuff. So it's the brat decor. The brat, I don't know what it's called, but yeah, we're gonna be giving away all that stuff. Uh, we're gonna start the podcast up and figure a cool way to give it away. We just want to help a, a, a family out there or a parent out there that might not have. So, but I appreciate you for hitting us. Thank you so much. No problem. Have a good day. And hey, Claudia. Hey, girl. Hello. Who's this? What up, what up, DJ Envy? This A-O. A and the letter O, Alex Osuna, that's all. A-O. Give, who you want to give Donkey to? I want to give Donkey of the day to the judge in the Young Thug Rico trial case, man. Why? I was watching it yesterday, man, and I feel like the judge is all about himself. I think he wants the camera all on himself. And then just hearing he had his dog in there and provided a whole discovery on that. I don't think he worked working on uh, the case and focused on the case that much. I think he's focused on himself, and he needs to get removed. Okay. ASAP. Yeah, it, d- it does sound a little funny where he had a whole dissertation about his dog and his g- a golden retriever and that it has a little bell on and don't bring it forward. I know more about the dog than the case because of what he said yesterday. <laughs> Appropriate. Exactly, exactly. That's 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 my point. I, I went to court. I went to trial. And uh, if that was me, I would have I would have told my judge to ask for a mistrial just off of that. Like the the dogs don't have no relevance on the case. That's right. Hello, who's this? This is AJ from Ohio. AJ from Ohio. Who you want to give Donkey of the Day to, bro? I definitely want to give Donkey of the Day to that young man you guys were talking about this morning uh, that was getting ready to leave his wife because she was paralyzed. Oh yeah, that was that's actually Claudia's friend, Sonia. Sonia. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you're giving Donkey of the Day to her husband. For leaving her while she's paralyzed. Yeah, that's donkey of the day behavior. I feel like, like uh, that defeats the purpose of trying to be a husband. Why sign up to be a husband when you're gonna dip when it gets difficult? You know. Okay. Well, go to my Instagram yeah. page on my story. I put her picture up. I'm trying to find her a new husband. So screw him. Wow. Hello, who's this? This is General Smiles, man. Hey, General Smiles. Who you wanna give donkey to, bro? Oh uh, man, I want to give Donkey the other day to my contractor. I'm an HVAC subcontractor, and he hasn't paid any of us his contractors in a week yet. So he gets the donkey for a fact. Damn, hopefully you get paid before Christmas, bro. I, I do. I do want to give a quick shout out, Envy. I'm a huge fan. I host a radio show on Wednesdays on Blog Talk Radio, and I idolize my way out. Run my show from you. I just want to give you flowers while I'm, while you're alive, brother. Thank appreciate you, brother. It. I appreciate it so much. Rachel, you the last person, Rachel. Who you want to give Donkey today to? Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, so the first person I want to talk to the base is he actually done me. You should be ashamed of yourself. Your parents put you in a great position. Donkey. Straight up donkey. You're acting like a fool. Sit down. Please. Oh, you want to give... You said you to T.I., son? Yes. He is embarrassing his family. Ah. He is embarrassing the black community. When he comes see you, he's going to stand on his business and come see you. <laughs> he is. <laughs> I live in Miami. Come see me, baby. And I'm from Brooklyn. What up? Oh, yeah. You scared me. Brooklyn and Miami? All right. You have a good one. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, let's talk. Well, first of all, play the donkey sound. He all, he all. One time. All right. Now, when we come back, let's talk support animals. 800-585-1051. Now, we were talking earlier in the rumors about the judge who brought his support animal to court. Uh, And we want to talk support animals this morning. Some people don't believe in them. Some people think they're fake. Some people think they're lies. But if you don't know, support animals are can help people that are, are mentally having mental problems, right? Whether it's to ease anxiety or depression or certain phobias. But that's not what we're talking about. Those people absolutely positively, yes, I, I agree. People do need support animals and do need uh, emotional type of animals, but some people take it too far, right? I, I'm reading the 30 craziest support animals that people use in America that mm. they try to get on planes with, right? Let's hear this. The number one that people try and have tried before is uh, a kangaroo. 
<laughs> in February, a Wisconsin woman was asked to leave McDonald's when she entered the restaurant with Jimmy, her emotional support kangaroo. Have you seen kangaroos fight? He will whoop you. <laughs> yes. Number two, a bearded dragon. <laughs> Number three, people have tried to uh, get on planes with a pig with a, a vest on it and said that is their support animal. You put a vest on a pig. Yes. Number four, turkey. People have tried to put a vest on a turkey and walk. In 2016, a passenger uh, went on a Delta flight uh, and uh, she was in a comfort seat and uh, in her seat was a turkey because a, uh, a person said it was a therapeutic companion. And they cleared that. Yeah. Peacock, like you said. Snakes, ducks, chickens, miniature horses. And one person even went on a flight with a squirrel. So let's talk uh, support animals this morning. 800-585-1051. What are your thoughts? Now, uh, somebody that works up here told us behind the scene that uh, she has an animal, a cat, in her apartment. Mm. And they said that, you know, if you have a cat, it's an extra $300. But if it's your emotional support cat, it's free. That's the only reason I tried it. I did scam the system. Full disclosure, mm -hmm. I didn't want to pay because I brought two cats when I moved to Dallas. And I used that. It was so easy to get the letter. That's why I call BS on a lot of it. There are people that need it, but there's it's so easy to take advantage of the system. That's why you got people bringing alligators on a plane. So maybe I feel comfortable, but now everybody else on the plane is shook the whole flight. I'm not sitting next to an alligator. No, no I'm, I'm not sitting next to a squirrel or a pig or anything that's going to happen. Did they have diapers? I, I don't know, but let's discuss. 800-585-1051. Let's talk support animals. Ah, it's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. It's topic time. Call 800-585-1051 to join into the discussion with The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Charlemagne is out today. And of course, Claudia Jordan is our guest co host. And we're talking about support animals. Now, this conversation comes from the judge uh, in the YSL case uh, who says he needed his support animal in court, which is a Labrador retriever with a bell. And he said the dog minds his business. And we're asking, what are your thoughts on support animals? Now, I do know support animals help a lot in, in, in a lot of situations, help with anxiety, uh, help with phobias, help with fears. So I, I do get it. But sometimes I think people take it too far. They do. All like right? I said, I do. Now, what phobia will, will help you with, when you got your support alligator? Because now I have a phobia. Right. So if I'm sitting next to you in a plane and you got an alligator with you, now I have a phobia. Your support animal is my phobia. And think of logis logistically with an alligator. Do, it has to go to the bathroom on a flight, right? Do you put a diaper and the vest? Does the vest go with that diaper? Forget it has to go to the bathroom. It has to eat. It's going to be hungry. Right. And, and I'm going to look like lunch. Go ahead and catch your, hold your toe and do that death roll in the, in the aisle. Yeah, and <laughs> it's spinning, me, spinning me down the Delta flight. No, 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 no. Now I get it. Like some people, yes, uh, uh, a cat and, and a dog in, in, in certain situations can help. But sometimes, I mean, I, I've seen people on flights with dogs the size of me sitting between somebody's leg. And now I'm scared the whole flight. So now your support system is scaring me. I think like in typical American fashion, we, listen, there's always going to be people going to take advantage of the system. Like I said, I did it myself. Hello, who's this? Yo, yeah, what's up? This is Anonymous. I can't give out my name for this one. Uh, <laughs> why, why, why? What's up? I, Talk to us. Yo, know, listen, let me tell you, I have an issue with these support animals. First of all, th that is white people activity. Black people don't need no support animals. And I think it's crazy that they think that they should be allowed to bring these stinky animals into public places like restaurants and grocery stores and like why do i have to be subjected to your animal because you are too sensitive to come outside without a dog now, or a parrot now i will parrot now i will agree I, I will agree with this i i do feel that some people do need it I, people with disabilities or people having problems they do need that support system Man. but sometimes i feel like just the the little mm -hmm. old white lady just got the little pomeranian in the in the supermarket no, no. All the groceries is just a little too far Listen, dog, I feel like these people that have all these animals are because they're lonely and they have social skills that are not adequate. You don't need to walk around with no dog in your backpack or getting on the airplane to have this nasty looking animal looking at me with his tongue out, breathing that breath on me when I'm in a plane. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's too excessive. America has gotten soft. We don't need these things. Like, we support animals. Animals don't support us. 
but we wipe their and you know what I'm saying? Like we feed them. They don't feed us. So I think it's just a cop out for people to just seek attention. Like look at me, I have a dog. Okay. Like it's stupid. Thank you, brother. Nika. Yes. Hey Nika, good morning. Good morning. We're talking support animals this morning. What's your thought? I love my dog. She's not an official support animal, but my baby Sky. She was with me through COVID and she was there one hundred percent. They love you in ways that a, a person couldn't. So so let me ask you a question. You put a vest on the dog and say it's a support animal and just take it to places with you? I thought about it, but, I, but all you gotta do is get them um get them certified. It's not much to get them certified. <laughs> so you don't need it. You just want to carry him around with you. That's my girl. He, he's with me 100%. <laughs> See? See? Again, there are people that legitimately need it. We're not talking about y'all. We're talking about taking advantage of the system. And it's easy. Chanel. Yes. Let's talk about support animals this morning. Support animals are a bunch of BS. Why you get to have your freaking animal with you when giving me anxiety because I don't do animals, I don't do cats, dogs, none of that. So now my nerves all jacked up. If you can't, if you can't go over without your animal, stay your ass home. But you know, Chanel, some people do need it. Some people have disabilities and, and stay and, home. And, okay, that's fine. I understand. When I go in the grocery store, I don't need to see no blind, no seeing eye dog because you can't. The dog can't say how much your stuff is. Uh, I understand blind people need the dog. But what you need a dog for in the grocery store, that's nasty. That's real nasty. Putting the kids going to the basket, you still put the dog in the basket. Blind people got to shop too, Chanel. Blind people, I gave you the pass. Online shopping, braille. They can't, the dog, what they need the dog for? The dog can't tell them how much the stuff is oh in the God. store. Chanel, blind people got to go out too. They just not going to be shopping online they can with go braille. Out and that's fine, but why they got to be in the store? Because they got to. They want to touch the fruit and make sure the fruit is hard and soft, and they want to pick their own stuff out as well. They can feel it and touch it, and they need the dog to guide them. That's fine, but what you need the dog for? What you need the dog for? How they going to walk down the aisle if they can't see? They got a cane. Ray Charles did it. I ain't seen him but one dog. Ray Charles. Goodbye, Chanel. Bye. Goodbye, Chanel. I was with her until I, I tried. She, she you can't, know what? The seeing eye dogs, come on, they get a pass. I'm not talking about those. 800-585-1051. We're just talking about support dogs this morning. Let's let's have a conversation. What do you think about them? Let's talk. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. It's topic time. Call 800-585-1051 to join into the discussion with the Breakfast Club. Let's talk about it. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Now, if you're just joining us, we're talking about support animals. This conversation comes from a judge in the YSL case who said he needed his support animal in court to help him out. Let's go to the phone lines. We're asking about support animals. Now, I do feel that people do need support animals. There's a lot of people that use support animals, people who have anxiety and phobias and fears, and those dogs comfort them. A lot of people with disabilities use the dog to be able to to get around and feel comfortable in, in public. So we're just asking, what's your opinion on these animals? We have uh, Chrissy on the line. Chrissy, good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm wonderful. Okay, so on your service animals dog, um, mm-hmm. to defend the, the judge, mm-hmm. he didn't have a emotional support dog. He had a support dog. And there's a difference. I'm sorry, a service dog. And that's the purpose of the bail. The bell is to tell everybody around him if he's about to have a seizure or if he's about to go into, like, something medical. My niece has one. Mm-hmm. So I think giving him, like, the young man who gave him the donkey of the day, for him explaining to the audience or to the courtroom that, hey, you know, I have the service dog behind me. If you hear this bell, you know, this is this. Don't, don't be alarmed. Don't feed him. This, that, and the third. I think he told it in a jokingly way. But it's just to tell the people around him, hey, heads up. This this bell start going off. Y'all need to call somebody. I got you. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, thank you, Mama, for clearing that up. You're welcome. Now we have uh, Catherine on the line. Catherine, good morning. Good morning, DJ MV. Hey, Claudia. Hey. Now, good Catherine morning. is a mental health therapist and support her clients and people having support animals, correct? I do, yeah. So, like, within my career, I've had plenty of clients with support animals from children to senior citizens all the way around. So I'm in full support. And now I do agree with you, DJ, and what you said earlier about how people kind of take it too far with like kangaroos and chickens and all them, them other things that you said earlier. So 
those, yes, you don't need that. But as far as dogs and cats, those animals bring a certain level of emotion to people's lives. You know, like unconditionally, dogs will like love you. They will greet you at the door and do all of these things. So I have had clients that needed that, whether, you know, some of one, so this support animal kind of helped them through that. Mm -hmm. I just have clients who are so, like, fearful of, like, airplanes for whatever reason. The turbulence, you know, if they knew somebody that, yeah. like, that was, like, whatever the case may be, but they just can't even walk on the door of an airplane. And what are they going to do? Just, like, never travel and not live their lives? So we have to find some type of, like, supplement for them to be able to live their daily lives and do things. Now, do I think people kind of take advantage of it and bring certain animals to environments where maybe it's not needed? Yes, but it's such a slippery slope because a lot of people just really do struggle going to coffee shops, getting up, getting in the car. So it's like you kind of need to, to take certain measures in right. order for them to do things. So it's like, it, it's really a slippery slope. I've even had, like, I, I um, am a therapist for children. I, I was in the past. Mm -hmm. So I've even had children in this facility that I was working at at the time. They were just so suicidal and tried so many different things every day to, like, try to kill themselves. But then when we implemented, you know, weekly support animal therapy, I think it was like two to three times a week or something like that, this particular client lived each wait each week and each day so that they could see this animal. So it does yeah. definitely bring a different level of yeah, no, I get it. You know, optimism to certain to certain people. I do know people do need it and I know it helps with anxiety and things like that. But you know, my thing is is when I start seeing people with alligators and, and pigs and kangaroos yeah. Uh, I mean, you're a therapist. Yeah. Have you ever, you know, su suggested somebody to go get a, a kangaroo or alligator or a parrot or no. a peacock? You know, it, but I always no. have to ask, like, my daughter, right? My daughter, London, is scared of dogs. Like, when I say scared, it doesn't matter how little, how big. It could be a miniature dog. She ain't messing with dogs. So now, if she's on a plane with somebody with a dog, it's it's kind of... it. it, it like what does she do now she has anxiety because there's a dog there and now the person with the dog there doesn't have anxiety you know yeah and, and, it, and it, that is true because you do have people with like a, a phobia of certain animals so it's like what do you do you make that person uncomfortable or do i just like not get on the plane because i can't get on without the dog so that's why and it's like you can't really make it fair for everybody in every situation which is why even if you do have like a dog you know, and things like that on a plane. Um, I don't even think I've seen, like, really big dogs on a plane. I think it has to be, like, small, so where they're in, like, a little carrier or a cage or whatever, uh, which could be helpful for people like your daughter who has a fear of dogs. Uh, but it's a slippery slope. Like, I'm, I'm in support of it, but no, I, I never say, oh, yeah, go get that alligator because you have anxiety. <laughs> go get that kangaroo um, and do that. No, you de definitely keep it small like dogs, cats, or maybe even like a rabbit, you know, a, a bunny, you know, something, you know, containable. But yeah, people do take advantage of certain things like they do with anything else in right. life. But um, even with the judge, when you guys are talking about the judge. I was going to ask you about that. Yeah, what's your thoughts on the judge having a support dog? So, I one, I, I do think it is okay for that judge. I don't know what that judge got going on. And I think you guys hit it on the head earlier when you said that you know, the judge is basically, you know, the decision maker for people's fate. You know, the, he's the one, you know, for kidnappers, for murderers and all of these other different things he has going on. And that definitely could take a toll on him. So I don't know if he has a support animal for, you know, um, his career purposes or maybe he has things going on interpersonally. Um, but honestly, like the clip you guys played earlier where he was talking about his dog and things like that. That man honestly spoke about that dog for less than three minutes. And I don't think that man should be crucified of that. Um, you know, to say that, oh, he knows more about the dog than the case, that is like, you know, false. You know, he was just trying to speak about something lighter other than this Rico charge. This Rico thing has been going on for a while and it's definitely um, a dark topic. Um, and for a young thug, I mean, I think maybe he didn't want to hear about the dog. But honestly, I don't think he wants to hear about this Rico case either. This is a horrible situation. Touché. So honestly, to spend less than three minutes to talk about a dog and, and things like that, I don't think there was anything wrong with that. Um, and, you know, for him to bring it in court 
it is okay for him, you know, to do. If he can go on and do his job effectively and actually make appropriate decisions based on the facts at hand, if his dog wants to sit beside him and do that, that's okay. Well, thank you, Catherine. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Atlanta. I'm a therapist in Atlanta. Okay, well, we appreciate you. And thank you for checking in and, and checking us when we all know our, our facts. Yeah, and, and for yours that don't know, after uh, hearing a lot from you guys and they're saying that actual dog was able to detect seizures. Seizures in the judge. Yeah, so that's why the judge, I mean, he's not an emotional support dog. He's a service dog, which is uh, if, there, if there's a problem or a situation, he's able to detect it before things happen. So that's why the judge has the dog there. I can rock with that. Yeah, of so course. That, that makes sense. So we were wrong, but that's why he has that uh, animal with him in the courtroom. All right, well, let's get to the rumors. Listen up, everyone. I mean, where did I really even start? This, 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 this is the rumor report. They call me Soldier Boy sometimes because they say it sounds fake, but I swear <laughs> they're all true. On the Breakfast Club. All right, Jordan stories are great. If you live long enough, you're going to have stories. That is very true. You know what I mean? Very true. Let's talk. Let's talk. Let's talk. Let's talk. All right, so Saucy Santana is facing backlash for roasting a woman on set. There's a clip that's been going around. Uh, Saucy has some of the girls in an uproar over some things he had to say on a set of a video shoot recently. Now, this video came out where Saucy is interacting with an unidentified woman. When she walks away, Saucy starts complaining about the type of woman that apparently uh, his team brought to set, referencing the woman who just walked away. And then y'all even got no bad f***ing, ain't had no BBL, her makeup one done, like what are we doing? So like the f***ing need a BBL? Yeah, like they ain't got no BBLs, no mink lashes, no lace wigs, no nothing. She just came out and said Now social media users were not happy that Saucy Santana was body shaming a woman who chose to be natural. Some people showed their disappointment in how common it is for people to flaunt the image that had been heavily altered. Mm -hmm. One person said, see? This is the problem now. Another one said, three BBLs and still being built like a hot air balloon is crazy. He got some nerve. Well, what do you feel about it? You're, you're, you're natural, right? I am natural. Mm -hmm. I haven't had any plastic surgery done. I had some fillers done. Mm -hmm. um, that's it. Um, I, I think we're at a place now where natural is looked down upon now. I remember people being in my DM saying, you need to get your butt done. I'm like, mm -hmm. My butt will be done from squats and from hitting the track. Mm -hmm. And that ship has sailed for me. I just think, listen, Saucy, you're free to do what you want with your body, and you have, mm -hmm. and that's cool. But leave leave natural women alone because it's hard, it's hard now. We get compared to people who spend thousands of dollars on their bodies mm -hmm. and shame for not getting surgery now. Yeah, and I think I think a lot of these women look alike, right? They they're all built the same. They, it seems like they all go to the same doctors. They all look like, as Miss Pat would say, like big ants. Uh, with the huge uh, ass in the back and and I think it gets to a point where we have to start saying natural is fine it doesn't matter what your body type is you don't want to look like everybody else and that's why I always said you know parents make sure you love your children tell your children they look beautiful every day tell your children that they're gorgeous every day because you don't want them to look like everybody else you know and honestly, there was a point where I'm thinking, do I need to get something done? But then I had to check myself like mm -hmm. it's okay to look different than everybody else. I love the 90s the music videos. There were so many pretty women that they, that's how they, they really look. They really looked in person. They mm -hmm. really were that type of beautiful person. So, all right, Santana. All right, next up, um, Fat Joe gave the backstory on his popular name, Joey Crack. Do you know the story? I didn't know. I, I heard yesterday, but I thought Joey Crack was, you know, he came up in the, in the drug era. And we all knew, you know, old Fat Joe was a gangster and a hustler. So I thought it was crack as in Joey slung crack. I thought the same thing, too. But the, the actual story is a little bit uh, more, um, I don't know, simpler than that. Fat Joe recently tweeted where the name came from, and it's not at all what we expected. He said, listen, they call me Joey Crack because the crack of my ass showed whenever I stood up. <laughs> That's Girls in my hood gave me the name. It was never because of the drug crack. And he ended it with God is great. <laughs> you gotta love Joey Crack and shout to Joey Crack shout to Fat Joe I, I know recently he, uh, one of his brothers passed away so definitely sending healing energy and you know our support for that but Fat Joe is one of those people in the industry that is not an industry friend he's a real friend and if he considers you as a real friend he calls he'll check up on you not when things are great not when things are bad he does it frequently so and he does he's been doing that with me for the, the, the past I don't even know how long every you know, a couple of days he just calls or just sends a text to say, hey, Envy, I love you. Just checking up on you. And he's been doing that for years. So 
Good morning, Fat Joe. Good morning, Lorena. Good morning, uh, Azzy. Love you guys. And that is your rumor report. Thank you so much. All right. When we come back, we got the People's Choice Mix. Get your request in right now. 800-585-1051. Let me know what you want to hear. We'll get your request on. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. It's your time to nominate a donkey of your own. Remember now, that's is how they choose. Call in now. 800-585-1051. Hello, who's this? This is Darina. Hey, Darina. Who you want to give donkey to? Um, I need to give... I've been trying to do this for a while, but I need to give donkey a, of the day to you, DJ Envy. Me? Oh, Why? Because, so I forget who was there, but you guys were talking about, um... You were talking about how if somebody is bullying your kid and how you teach your kids to stand up for yourself. Oh, okay. Rightfully so. Mm-hmm. And you said to say... That's why your mom drives a Camry. <laughs> I drive a Camry. <laughs> and it's actually pretty nice. Like, it's, 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 I mean, it's 2019, but it's my Camry. It's clean. So, clean. I got you. I was like, yes, my wheels are clean. I mean, you know. It is a fact. <laughs> right right Envy is a car snob, I'll though. take that. I'll take that. I'm sorry, Darina. I cannot believe you did that. But I've been trying to tell you that all day. And literally today, I sent you... A message on Instagram and Gia, a message on Instagram because you were talking about uh, your baby furniture. Yeah. And my daughter's about to have a, a little boy in April. But, you know, I was telling you that I was going to give you Donkey the Day if you reply to me. And finally, I got through because I've been trying to get through since you said that. Well, I'm sorry, and salute to all the moms that drive Camrys. I appreciate you. Yeah, but but Gia and I are going to be giving away our uh, all the nursery stuff. So it's the Brat Decor. The brat, I don't know what it's called, but yeah, we're going to be giving away all that stuff. Uh, we're going to start the podcast up and figure a cool way to give it away. We just want to help a, a family out there or a parent out there that might not have. So, But I appreciate you for hitting us. Thank you so much. No problem. Have a good day. And hey, Claudia. Hey, girl. Hello, who's this? What up, what up, DJ MV, this A-O, A and the letter O, Alex Osuna, that's all. A-O, give, who you want to give Donkey to? I want to give Donkey of the day to the judge in the Young Thug Rico trial case, man. Wow. I was watching it yesterday, man, and I feel like the judge is all about himself. I think he wants the camera all on himself. And then just hearing he had his dog in there and provided a whole discovery on that. I don't think he's work, working on uh, the case and focused on the case that much. I think he's focused on himself and he needs to get removed. Okay. ASAP. Yeah, it, it does sound a little funny where he had a whole dissertation about his dog and his a golden retriever and that it has a little bell on and don't bring it forward. I know more about the dog than the case because of what he said yesterday. <laughs> Appropriate. Exactly, exactly. That's 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 my point. I, I went to court, I went to trial and uh, if that was me, I would have I would have told my judge to ask for a mistrial just off of that. Like the the dog don't have no relevance on the case. That's right. Hello, who's this? This is AJ from Ohio. AJ from Ohio. Who you want to give Donkey the day to, bro? I definitely want to give Donkey of the day to that young man you guys were talking about this morning uh, that was getting ready to leave his wife because she was paralyzed. Oh yeah, that was that's actually Claudia's friend, Sonia. Sonia. Yeah. So you giving Donkey the day to her husband? For leaving her while she's paralyzed. Yeah, that's donkey of the day behavior. I feel like, like uh, that defeats the purpose of trying to be a husband. Why sign up to be a husband when you're gonna dip when it gets difficult? You know. Okay. Well, go to my Instagram yeah. page on my story. I put her picture up. I'm trying to find her a new husband. So screw him. Wow. Hello, who's this? This is General Smiles, man. Hey, General Smiles. Who you wanna give donkey to, bro? Oh uh, man, I gotta give Donkey the other day to my contractor. Uh, I'm an HVAC subcontractor, and he hasn't paid any of us his contractors in a week yet. So he gets the donkey for a fact. Damn, hopefully you get paid before Christmas, bro. I, I do. I do want to give a quick shout out, Envy. I'm a huge fan. I host a radio show on Wednesdays on Blog Talk Radio, and I idolize my way out. Run my show from you. I just want to give you flowers while while you're alive, brother. Thank you, brother. you, I appreciate it so much. Rachel, you the last person, Rachel. Who you want to give Donkey today to? Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, so the first person I want to talk to today is the actress Run Skin. You should be ashamed of yourself. Your parents put you in a great position. Donkey, straight up donkey. You're acting like a fool. Sit down, please. Oh, you want to give? You said you to Tia, son. 
Yes, he is embarrassing his family. Ah. He is embarrassing the black community. When he comes see you, he gonna stand on his business and come see you. Yeah. <laughs> I live in Miami. Come see me, baby. And I'm from Brooklyn. What up? Oh yeah, you scared me. Brooklyn and Miami. All right. You have a good one. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right, that was Donkey of the Day. Charlemagne, we'll be back tomorrow. And uh, when we come back, we got the positive note and more, so don't move. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Now, um, Claudia, I appreciate you hanging out with me the last couple of days. Thank you for having me. I had fun like usual. Now, uh, if you don't know, Claudia had some things to do. Uh, and she pushed it back so she can come and hang out with us for the last couple of days. So we appreciate you for that. I'm heading to L.A. to do my first horror film. So stay tuned for that. Do you die in the first five minutes? I don't die in the first five minutes. And I really can't give it away because I want you to watch it. But I'm stepping up from Tubi, y'all. I'm going to BT now. Now, I, I just want to tell you, you know, there's a clip going around uh, of, of a Tubi movie of you. Mm-hmm. You know, I just re I seen that clip like a thousand times. And I didn't know it was you until last week. Good. <laughs> so if you don't know the clip, I mean, let me let me explain it. Do we have the audio? We don't have the audio. We don't have the audio. So, I'm just a kid. Yeah, so Claudia comes home from jail. Mm -hmm. And she goes to her ex-man's house. And when she gets to her ex-man's house, she realizes that her ex-man has a new girl. Claudia pulls out a gun. Wait, wait, wait. Let me justify it. It's not just a girl. He got with the parole officer that I went to jail for shooting and had the audacity to have a baby with her when he's supposed to be waiting for my character to get out of prison to hold me down. So when he didn't, so Claudia shoots the man. Sure did. Shoots the wife. Yep. And then shoots the baby. And some kids. <laughs> Claudia shot the kid. <laughs> I, I know y'all seen this too. It was all over everywhere. It was on Shade Room. It was on Jasmine Brand. It was on Ball Alert. It was on Hollywood Online. It was on everywhere. If you haven't seen it, the movie's called All I Want Is You by director um, Silk White. And it's a part one and part two. The sad thing is the movie's actually really good. But that scene is funny because of the special effects and stuff. So people don't get to like know how dope the rest of the movie is. It's actually good. But I did shoot everybody. Everybody had to die. Jesus Christ. All right. Well, when we come back, we got the positive note. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. It's time to get up out of here. Uh, Charlemagne is back tomorrow. Uh, and uh, you got a positive note for the people? You got any positivity to give to the people before you leave? Um. <laughs> hey, listen, it's tough times out here. Try to give people a little bit more grace because you don't know what people are going through. Everyone has a story just like you want them to understand and be, have show you mercy and grace. Please try to do the same for your neighbor. And also watch me on Fox Soul five days a week. Breakfast Club, bitches! Y'all finished or y'all done?